Hey there, Rockets. It's your sensei again. So, as I said in my last video, we are done learning about Martin Luther King Jr. With that in mind, we are going to be changing gears and now talking about the other side of the argument. I think most of you guys are aware of the fact that MLK's beliefs were not the only ones that black people or people of other races held at the time. In fact, MLK specifically mentions these other people in his letter from a Birmingham jail. We are going to be looking at one of these other activists known by the name of Malcolm X. But before we get to learn more about what he has to say about the civil rights movement, let's take a look at what brought him into becoming a civil rights leader of his day. Let's take a look. There is an increasingly vocal minority who disagreed totally with your tactics, Dr. King. There's no doubt about that. I will agree that uh, there is a, a group in the Negro community advocating violence now. Panther. Panther doesn't strike anyone, but uh, when he's assailed upon, that he'll back up first. But if the aggressor continues, then he'll strike out. I think we've got to see that a riot is the language of the unheard. mood of the Negro community now is one of urgency, one of saying that we aren't going to wait, that we've got to have our freedom. We've waited too long. Yes, my hope is that it will be nonviolent. I would hope that we can avoid riots because riots are self-defeating and socially destructive. Sup, weebs? It's Cosplay Sensei here. So, before we get started, I wanted to share a true story that actually happened. I went to Walmart and a couple of other stores to see if I could find another black Chelsea doll because I only had the one and I need two people for this particular thing that we're gonna be looking at. And I gotta say, I couldn't find any others. I was ticked. I did find, however, that this thing might have a black Chelsea doll in it. I'm actually kind of excited. Let's get into it. Ah. I can't open it with the gloves on. Oh, here we go. So for those of you guys who have never had a uh, Chelsea reveal doll, it is supposed to be that you can get one of these six or five, I don't remember how many there are, uh, Chelsea dolls. But it's a mystery. So, Chelsea starts out as pink, and she has a whole bunch of other stuff too. I gotta say, I am not liking these packages. Okay, so it comes with like five different things. This looks like their hair. This looks like... I don't know what that is. A skirt and... Another thing I don't know. Maybe it's shoes? So... 
We're going to see about this little human, whether or not it's going to be a white human or a black one. So as you can see, it is currently coated in pink, but it's supposed to not be pink after a while. You're supposed to heat it up in um, warm water, I think, but let's look at the directions. Yeah, so it's saying first put it back in the thing, then we're going to add some hot water. Welcome to science class with Sam Sensei. Let's get started. So I have here some warm water. Time to give it a bath. I see some uh, black hair is emerging. I think I'm supposed to give it a shake maybe. Ugh. Bad news, you're not supposed to shake it. It just got gross water all over me. I'm gonna have to go get a napkin or something. Okay. So, got some things to pull it out too. I don't wanna ruin my gloves. Remember kids, don't do this without parent supervision. Let's see, we know it has black hair, so where's that thing? I don't know, it could be, it could be. Let's check. Remember, we're hoping to get black Chelsea, another black Chelsea. It's like most of the pink got taken off. Okay, who's ready? Let's see, is it gonna be? White or black, let's check. Oh no. <laughs> what is this? Oh, dang it. This is definitely not black. I promise I'm not trying to drown it. I just, I need to get the pink off of its head. <laughs> well, my disappointment is immense, however, I guess now, um, White Chelsea has another friend to pick on people with. I guess I have to go back to the store. Two hours later. Good news. I did find some Black Chelsea's. <laughs> hey there, weaves. We're gonna learn about Malcolm X today. Malcolm X probably got his inspiration for becoming a civil rights leader from his father. His father was very fierce about black people having rights, which got him in a lot of trouble with the KKK. Because of this, Malcolm X had to move from many different states before eventually his father was killed mysteriously in a streetcar accident. Now I say mysteriously because it's very possible that Malcolm X's father was actually murdered, although this hasn't been formally confirmed by anyone yet. After Malcolm X's father died, his mother also was thrown into a mental institution for insanity. Again, it's difficult to say whether she was truly insane or if somebody was just pulling a really bad prank. Because of this, Malcolm X was sent from foster home to foster home until eventually he grew up with not a whole lot of dreams. In fact, the one dream Malcolm X did have, becoming a lawyer, was completely shot down by one of his teachers. I hope this never happens to you guys, but please, don't ever let your teacher tell you you can't have the dream that you want. When Malcolm X grew up, he decided he was going to start living that thug life. He became a drug dealer, he would steal things, among many other criminal activities, which eventually got him put in the slam. Now, while Malcolm X was there, that's where he was converted to Islam. Somebody came to him asking him if he wanted to join the Nation of Islam. And at, although Malcolm X definitely refused quite a few times, eventually Malcolm X said, sure, I'll do it. 
And because he became a good Muslim, because he started doing all these good things in jail, he got out early and joined the Nation of Islam for real. Now, one thing they noticed immediately was that Malcolm X was really good at speeches. And so Malcolm X was usually used by the Nation of Islam to teach other black people about how they are being treated poorly, how they are actually the master race, and that white people are the blue-eyed devil, which is a quote from Elijah Muhammad. Now this all sounded pretty good for black people who are really sick and tired of white people always telling them what to do. And Malcolm X loved what he was teaching them. He was very good at it. We've seen some of his speeches. He's fierce and determined, but something wasn't sitting right with Malcolm X. After a lot of being with the Nation of Islam, it became obvious the Nation of Islam was not following the religion the way that it should have been. One of the biggest reasons is that their leader, Elijah Muhammad, not only slept with teenage girls, but also got them pregnant and hid them away so that they wouldn't tell anybody about what happened. Because of things like this and more, Malcolm X was very upset with the Nation of Islam, but he didn't want to leave Islam entirely. Instead of being a part of the Nation of Islam, Malcolm X decided to just follow Islam itself and became a Sunni Muslim. Now for those of you guys who... Hold on, Ayana, I got this one. For those of you guys who don't know what Sunni Islam is, it's similar to being like, well, I'm a Baptist Christian or I'm a Catholic Christian. It's just another type of Islam. So Malcolm X became Sunni Muslim. And one of the things that he had to do was go on a Hajj pilgrimage. Hajj pilgrimage, basically, is when you have to go all the way to Mecca and do a certain amount of rituals there, and then you fulfilled the Hajj pilgrimage thing. Malcolm X went on Hajj pilgrimage. He went to Mecca, and while he was there, he noticed something that changed his life forever. You see, while he was worshiping in Mecca, he noticed that, yeah, there were black people there also worshiping, but more importantly to him, there were white people worshiping as well. Now this made Malcolm X realize something very important. You see, before, the Nation of Islam, because they were treating white people as if they were the blue-eyed devil, they obviously didn't want them working with him. And neither did Malcolm X. He didn't want to. He only wanted to work with other black people and thought that white people were a waste of time. But after worshipping with white people, Malcolm X realized that he made a mistake. And when he came back to America, he started changing the things that he was saying to his followers. He still gave those amazing speeches. However, this time, he didn't quite put down white people. Instead, Malcolm X focused particularly on making sure that black people were self-determined and that they knew that they had the power to protect themselves by any means necessary. The speech that we're gonna be looking at this next month is exactly that. While this speech doesn't have an actual name, most people call it the by any means necessary speech. In this speech, Malcolm X talks about what his core beliefs are, that black people have the power to protect themselves and that black people need to stick together against the white supremacists. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to seeing what this guy has to say. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Keep it cool. Welcome back, Rockets. 
I hope that you've learned a lot about Malcolm X in this video. When I had surveyed you guys at the beginning of the year, most kids said that they had not heard about Malcolm X or that they've never learned anything about him. I'm very excited to be bringing to you something that many of us have never learned before. I think it is very important for us to look at other sides of the argument in this case, because I don't know that there is a perfect answer. We, however, are going to be looking at this specific question. Is it ever okay to use violence to defend our civil rights? Some of you might think, no, it's never okay to use violence, while others of you, even though we've spent all this time with MLK, have still held firm to the idea that violence has to be used sometimes. It is a controversial topic, so I just want to make sure that we are respectful during our class discussions and that we remember that even if we have different ideas about how social justice should be achieved, we can all agree that some kind of change does need to happen. All right, guys, well, that's all the time that we have for today. So I will see you in class. Have a good one, Rockets. We've got to fight the power!